Hello, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's always a pleasure to meet with you, and uh, especially I want to thank God to uh, who enabled these wonderful sessions, and uh, I'm very, very grateful to Him because today so many people are going through so many crises, and you and I have that time and opportunity to meditate from the word of god and therefore i'm really really happy i'm rejoicing in my spirit a warm welcome to this short session where we are going to today deal from a very very important subject and a very tough subject to explain so that's why we are hand picking such subjects and we always try to um, narrate and uh, interpret it and uh, help all of us to understand why such topics are very very important right because there are certain scriptural paraphrases or chapters or books where people keep ignoring all the time. Uh, one such good example is, for example, the book of Leviticus. It's full of laws, full of, uh, you know, about um, the practices and uh, the guidelines and people ignore. No, you should not do that. Because none of the word, not even a letter in the Bible is being written by mistake or unnecessarily. Because a God is someone who values time. And he always likes to uh, portray things that are very important. Therefore, you can be sure that anything that God is trying to, uh, you know, put in the Bible, uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit, it's only for a necessary purpose. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 to 4 will be our meditation verse today. But we want to spend some time in setting the context. Now, what is the context? Now, what is the title? Animal sacrifice is insufficient. Now let us discuss a little bit from the Old Testament perspective and from the New Covenant standards and then we will get into the subject. Animal sacrifices have been given birth as early as Genesis chapter 3. Why? Because when Adam and Eve have fallen into sin, as all of you know, they took some leaves and they were tying around. And uh, what happens, the leaves withered and then again they uh, kind of went through that naked situation and it was very shameful for them. And God felt very bad whenever any children of God going through a poverty situation, you don't have food to eat, you don't have clothes to wear, you don't have a proper shelter, God is going to be very, very sad in his heart. And that's not the calling of any believer in Christ. If you would go through any situations like this, this is definitely not a problem with God. It is a problem with you because you have not understood the scriptures very well. Because Jesus walked in poverty to make you and rich both materialistic and spiritual. There are some preachers who will talk about only materialistic prosperity or only about spiritual prosperity. I would say both. Right? Any child of God should never go through the poverty stricken situation. And that's why Jesus gave his life on the cross. And he purchased this for a price, paying that ransom for our sins. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says that. Acts 2.38 says that. And you can read, I can give you more verses also, right? And 2 Corinthians 8.9 and 9.8. There is abundance in every good work that you do. Therefore, I am a believer of both. Now let's come back to the original point. This naked situation is the replication or the manifestation of the sinful deeds. For the wages of sin is death, the Bible says. You and I have to pay the price at some point of time while we live our life here on earth. If you escape from this, so what will be better for you is while you live your life on earth, it will be really, really good for you to pay that ransom. If God were to punish you, if God were to permit certain accidents or sickness or help you realize or chastise you, Proverbs 3, 11, 12, Proverbs 6, 23, you take and read. It's very good for you because you have an opportunity to correct and bounce back and come back in alignment with God. But some people, many times he does this and you keep on ignoring. Psalm 103, 3, um, uh, 3, um, 9 says this, that for God will not <clears throat> strive with the spirit of man forever, neither will he hold his anger forever. Therefore, our God Father will have his limit, uh, limit also. Why? Because you have started to love the worldly pleasures and the worldly deeds more than loving your father, more than having that uh, attitude to abide in his laws and commandments. Revelation 20 to 14. Therefore, what God would say, fine, no problem, I won't disturb you because he's gentle God. Holy Spirit is tender, he's gentle and he won't disturb you. He will walk out of your life. When God walks out of your life, 
you will either end up in disaster or you will continue in prosperity because the devil keeps you that way therefore you will not awake that's called as deep sleep spirit in a previous session we were preaching about it in tamil right you will be in the deep sleep spirit all the time kind of seduced right all is well with me or somebody will say nothing is well with me god forgotten me and uh, maybe this is how god cursed me which is also good but you need to find the reasons how to overcome right root cause and overcoming these two are the important parameters for every christian but they don't get into that coming back to the original position this is not god's calling that they should be in that naked state it was not god's will that they have to fall in sin and that's why god gave that tree of life and you please go and have the tree of life fruits from the tree of life you will gain wisdom and knowledge but instead he said evil and knowledge the tree of, you know, which has evil and knowledge do not touch the fruit why because it's going to give you that wicked thoughts that malicious thoughts that lustful thoughts but you know what happened and satan uh, kind of uh, overtook them and they fallen in sin now what happened is the leaves are getting withered they changing naked state and they are hiding you know god was really merciful therefore if you read uh, revelation uh, sorry genesis 3:21 that is where you will see god struck an animal for the first time blood was shed on earth uh, as an event of that sin that happened and the blood with the animal sacrifice happened animal sacrificed its life and gave its skin and god took that skin and kind of made them a tunic and then uh, you know covered them for the first time god gave them the permanent uh, clothing which will keep them away from nakedness now what does this mean is permanent clothing means the blood of christ that's a permanent clothing the anointing of the holy ghost permanent clothing the grace and mercy that we get in the name of jesus permanent clothing that will keep us away from all sorts of sins all sorts of sinful desires all sort of curses all sort of bondage bondages and every single thing that is against the laws and commandments against the will of god it will keep us away from those aspects if you stay away from those aspects you are going to stay away from the naked situation you will never get into nakedness you will never get be poverty stricken you will never live a life that is in downtrodden that keeps you deprived dejected rejected lonely you will never get into that and that's a reason we always need to meditate in the word of god day and night and god is pleased with such people bible says in psalm chapter 1 you take and read right now my point is not that now coming back to this this animal was sacrificed and that became a kind of a pro, what to say a kind of a programmatic um, uh, uh, what to say programmatic um, ritual where the blood will have to be always shed when there is sin that is going to be found in the mankind in the, in the, in, the, in the habitual principles when you when you have your lifestyle there will be a lot of sinful deeds now using a servant moses he had to define what all are going to fall under this category of sin what all will not fall and how to live your life holy that is called as laws and commandments you all know that 613 laws and commandments are in old covenant 1015 laws and commandments are in new covenant i am not yet coming there new covenant old covenant each time they violate they are given that prescription you will see in the book of numbers i meant to preach on that i am planning to do a series on that also different types of offering sin offerings right thanks of thanksgiving offering sabbath offering all those things will be there in that sin offering there is a prescription if you sin like this then you need to get, take a bull and sacrifice if you sin if you fall into this sinful category then you have to sacrifice this um, uh, sheep or dove whatever and that is the kind of ritual that was practiced but to help people realize that there is a bigger sacrifice that's going to come and god is going to sacrifice his only son jesus on the cross and that blood is going to cleanse them forever redeem them forever free them from all sort of bondages forever to get them into that practice and that belief jesus is not such a cheap person right god coming himself in the form of blood and flesh is equal to jesus the incarnate deity the form image of god created in the form of human being so god definitely expects that respect that reverence that understanding and he cannot cheaply come down that's why that's why 4000 years was taken by god uh, actually he could have sent the next day itself but we you know the mankind's uh, thought process right they were stiff necked stout heart hard hard people never paid attention they were rebellious and even in the wilderness they tested god and god had to destroy everyone and all the generation which were born on the way 
were the ones who entered into the land of Canaan, right? Almost six million people came out of the land of Egypt, not a single guy except, uh, not even Moses, except Caleb and Joshua, nobody entered. So that was the situation of the mankind. And after that also, they continuously sinned, kept on sinning. God couldn't find anyone righteous other than David, his servant, and through whose regime, uh, whose uh, bloodline, Jesus was born. This was the situation of mankind. And con consistently and continuously, God is teaching them something. Give that respect to the blood. Animal. He started as an example, role model. Animal's blood. But then, animal's blood was given as a temporary, um, it was a temporary setup, I would say. To teach them, there is a permanent offering. There is a permanent sacrifice. There is a much more divine sacrifice. The sacrifice which money cannot buy. No human being can be, no human being's sacrifices can be equated to that sacrifice. And that is the blood of Jesus. And I would give you Hebrews 2, 17, 18, and uh, you know, yeah, 1 Peter 1, 19, 1 Peter 3, 18, 19. There was no blemish in him. He was tempted like us at all points. He died as a lamb without blemish. He was just and although he was just, he died for unjust. All these things you can read, right? But that's not the concept here. The point that the father is trying to tell here for the 4,000 years is there is, a, there is a son of God coming and 600 years before Jesus came, all the prophecies were made more imminent. A uh, lot of prophets uh, were uh, kind of uh, rising up, Obadiah, Micah, Zachariah, Isaiah, all these guys, Jeremiah, all these guys came during at that point of time. Uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah came little earlier, but many prophets came in the last 600 years, right? And they started proclaiming about the birth of Jesus and Jesus was born, he died. He rose again and through the death, we, you and I have the remission of sins. Acts 2.38 says that you and I have victory in the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus. 1, 1 Corinthians 15.57 says all these things are not left behind as this ink printed on paper. No, these are the real promises. These are the true events and this is the truth and every promise has might in it. When you claim the promise, it's like command that proceeds of your mouth and the heavens react. The angelic host, they react. Father reacts, right? And that's how you and I are able to sail through in this life, despite of so many challenges. It's like a spiritual warfare. Christian's life is like battlefield every single day. And armor of God is nothing but the word of God. Bible says in Ephesians 6, uh, verses 12 to 19, you take and read, you will understand. Six spiritual weapons are given there, right? Belt of truth and uh, breastplate of righteousness and all the six spiritual weapons given there. Now, why am I explaining all of this? I want you to understand something. This is how the old covenant started and we have stepped into new covenant. Old covenant was given as a model, right? With a, uh, using animal sacrifice as a model and the blood was given as a representation. And that blood has been replaced with through Jesus' blood and Jesus shed his blood once for all. He said it is finished. And no human being have to die in taking the place of Jesus because it's other way around. Matthew 8, 17, Jesus took our place. He carried our sufferings, iniquities and infirmities, sickness, disease, all of this on him. And he died once for all, taking our place. Therefore, you and I need not go through that. But there, are, there were many people who went to the cross and they died to prove that, you know, they were cult people, cult uh, churches. And they said, see, even we can also die like Jesus. And why you guys are praising the Son of God? Yes, probably. You know, Peter, you don't have to go and prove. Why? Because are you so dumb? Peter died. Peter said, crucify me upside down. Which means he went uh, past that record where you are trying to die as Jesus. But he died more than Jesus. But still, Peter is making that point clear. I do not deserve even to die like Jesus. Why? Because the Son of God's blood is without blemish. That is the blood of purity. That, that is the blood which manifests divinity. That is the blood which alone has the right and authority to cleanse and forgive anybody's sins. No human being can replace. No animal being can. No, no animal can replace, right? Even you can manufacture the um, dinosaur with the help of a DNA and sacrifice the biggest animal in the biggest size. But it means nothing because why? The purity in the blood, right, is very, very important. Now, I hope you understood this. One more aspect I want to tell you. This is one aspect. Another aspect is many people say, use the word sacrifice. Be very careful. You will be judged for that. I sacrificed my life for God and his people, brother. I sacrificed all my comfort. I sacrificed all my luxury. 
and that's the reason you know i came to this ministry this and that nobody sacrifice is greater than jesus sacrifice the son of god made choice to be born in the line of sinful people you know all the way from rahab the harlot and uh, you can see um, i think it's in the bloodline of ruth boaz and ruth ruth is a moabite right that bloodline if you see the genealogy is well described in matthew chapter 1 excellent description you will see all the sinners bloodline he chose and he was born he was born in the stables all of us know right and he was not he preferred not to be born in the palace and uh, mother mary and father joseph they were quite poor and they were able to only sacrifice pigeon he did not choose a rich family and he was born among the brothers and he took the load of father joseph after he was dead and gone and he extended his a uh, time with mother mary and postponing his um what is that ministry until the age of 30 and 3 and 1/2 years he says i have no place to even lay my head he did not pick up that posh car it was like he never traveled in camels or donkeys or horses yeah the only time he would travel in the donkey was that to fulfill that prophecy that was like ben's car and audi car right he never preferred that luxurious life he walked and went everywhere and whatever is given he eats he doesn't go by the choice food nowhere live that life in humility philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 you read you will understand right this jesus not only lived a very simplest simplistic and hum, hum, life in humility but also got humiliated and in the midst of that he forgave people not only that he never compromised on his holy deeds he fulfills all the laws and commandments of from the old testament and the whatever he had been living he taught uh, as the new covenant standards like laws and commandments 1050 of them are a new covenant right Matthew 5:17 he says I did not come to abolish but I have come to fulfill all the laws laws and commandments according to the book of Moses that is why this blood is so divine and on top of that what happens is each time he is put into temptations by the devil sending men or sometimes he directly comes in conference 40 days fasting you know right and the, he was Matthew 4 Luke 4 you take and read you will understand uh, Jesus had to use is the uh, powers which he acquired not given to him for free from above he acquired through hard work honest prayers earnest prayers before god and he had to resist the devil each time all through all this he never lost his focus in there was no sin in him he, you know all always there was opportunity for him to sin fall in lust and be angry and kind of you know you know slap people and all that you know how they irritated jesus not once that is why this blood is blood of divinity you want to know more about this through the about the cross there is a series we have done 20 hours of teaching you will go through it if you go through it you will understand clearly now uh, my time is almost up let us read these four verses and we will close you all understand what we are saying here animal sacrifices is insufficient which also means your sacrifice is also insufficient it will no where able to reach near the standards of jesus sacrifice let's read this verse number 1 hebrews 10 verse 1 for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and now the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect you all understood right year after year day after day um, you people many people think fasting and praying itself is a sacrifice i have sacrificed my one meal brother there are very immature people you that's why i gave you a big list of sacrifices which jesus went through Yeah, does it account even to point one percentage of what Jesus went through? No way. The last twelve hours, Avi was tortured and bruised. That uh, in that alone is enough for the Son of God being bruised, brutally harassed, and uh, he had to kind of hang naked on the cross. That's enough. You know, nobody can even reach that last twelve hours. Then whole life, whatever sacrifices he went through, you think those sacrifices will make you perfect? No way. So never even have that attitude. In verse number 2 for then would they have not ceased to be offered for the worshipers one spurge um, would have had no more consciousness of sins but in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year one good thing that happens is year after year when they go through this sin offering one thing is being reminded that they are sinners it's nothing but a passive condemnation to them so they are counting it that they are sinners now according to the new covenant standards it shouldn't be like an yearly offering it should be it shouldn't be like an yearly remembrance but it must be remembered every day if possible every moment and that is where you need the leading of the holy spirit the holy spirit is the one who will work with you right inside of you it's a temple of god 
and it will ensure that you don't uh, your body is not defiled you don't fall in sin why because the day you are defiled and fall in sin you are worthy for condemnation you are worthy for punishment and the holy spirit will never allow you to get in there that's why it's very important to listen tune our ears to the voice of the holy spirit you want to know more about it walking in the spirit galatians 5 you take and read from 17 to not 17 actually 14 to 21 and uh, 1 peter uh, one not 1 peter um, i think 1 corinthians 12 1 to 11 1 corinthians 12 28 the gifts of the holy spirit Now, all these things if you read and you want to know more of the acts of the holy spirit acts chapter 2 and 3 is good enough you read all this you will understand what all happens when holy spirit becomes your partner your companion right that's very important because nothing else can get you to the close state of perfection and it's important for you to be reminded of what you are going through every moment and the holy spirit alone can help you and therefore instantaneously you can come out of these kind of you know situations that leads you to blemish sin lust and sexual immorality whatever it may be you will be able to come out of it right bounce back and come out of it imme- immediately and for example the thron- torn prox sorry pricks inside your flesh and uh, fig pricks inside the flesh of a leper the difference between your flesh and the leper's flesh leper will have no sensation he continues to walk and after a period of time what happens is the blood oozes oozes it gets infected he wouldn't even know that there is a thorn gone right inside his flesh or uh, you know the sole of his feet he will be dead in matter of 48 hours or 72 hours but when it enters your flesh you are conscious you are not a leper you will immediately pull out that and you will go to the doctor get the teeth injection done and bandage it and something like that and you want to be on the healing side because you don't want to die that's exactly the comparison what paul is trying to do here work with the holy spirit and immediately pull out that thorn pull out that lust pull out that immorality pull out everything that is against the divine will of god pull out everything that will make uh, grieve the spirit grieve the holy spirit ephesians 4:30 pull it off lastly for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins and also it is not possible that you may sacrifice might have sacrificed anything lot of money lot of time lot of efforts and lot of luxury to serve god and his people that cannot make you pure that is where i want you to be focused ministers of god evangelists of god missionaries pastors and even uh, you know family uh, people you know family people listening to me you are not in ministry but you are living a very righteous life uh, sacrificing i'm not i'm the only one not taking bribe yes it's a sacrifice it's a it's a suffering in your flesh agreed but all these things can never make you someone um, equivalent or something equivalent to the blood of jesus the glory should be given to the name of jesus and to his holy spirit through whom you and i are able to live holy so never take that self uh, prejudice or never take that credit on yourself because of me and my efforts or my sacrifice animal sacrifice and our sacrifice we are like this okay all right i hope today's session was a useful one please subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist share it with every one of uh, every one everyone whom you know it is your duty because you got to be the torch bearers you should be the light of the world god bless you continue to remember me and pray for our ministries i definitely need your prayer god bless you take care i'll meet you soon in the next session vanakkam namaskaram bye